because she's not a seven and a half foot tall, hairy chested person uh, who is going to, to beat everybody's head in who gets into her way, what she is going to do instead is use the advantages that she does have, having to do with, well, possibly <laughs> something as simple as um, having somebody come up to her and um, assume that he can um, overpower her or um, make it take a sing single punch and take Jane out. Jane is, is clever enough to know that um, having the other person commit himself first will give her an advantage. You bet. And she gets to be stealthy like a, like right. a good Seneca would be and yeah. um, use finesse. Why, um, given the fact that Jane has got um, a life that, that certainly is going to be lonely, um, how come you have introduced Dr. Curie, the, uh, the love interest in her life? Well, I think the, the most honest answer is that I wanted to intentionally paint myself into a corner. Oh. <laughs> um, it seems to me that, that very often characters in thrillers, particularly repeating characters, live a life of perpetual adolescence. They don't have real lives. They don't, they're not allowed to settle in and do the things that other people normally do. And what I wanted to do was to have Jane at least want to have a normal um, a normal life with a husband and children and right. and so on. And then to uh, make her live with what that means, what she's got to do in order to preserve that. Jane okay. does a good job with it. I'm wondering, you know, he seems a little inconsistent in the sense that first he wants her to give it all up, and then certainly in the face changers, he's the one that brings the person who needs to run to Jane. He sort of backs up and reverses himself, which is okay. I mean, people are inconsistent. But, you know, that have you had any the, comment about that, or did you give that any thought when you... Well, I gave it, actually, I, when she got married, I was already thinking, how is he going to get her to, to go out again? <coughs> Excuse me. Because wasn't that kind of a, a deal between them when they got married, was that yeah, she that, would give it right. up? Yeah, She had to give the promise, but the only way that the promise could ever be rescinded would be that Carrie would have to swallow his pride and say, uh, about that promise, right. um, you know, there is one person I just go out one more time and save this one person, and then it'll be over. But uh, who turns out, at least in the face changers? Well, not at least in who turns out in the face changers to be a mentor of Carrie's, um, a, a physician, an older physician right. who's finding himself confronted with um, sinister and sinister menace and right. needs sinister needs to run. <laughs> um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, he's uh, he's obviously. Uh, um, in a way designed to be the perfect person for Carrie to ask her to save. That is, this is the person to whom you can say, you can never say no. The person who taught you your profession and saved your career and made you who you are. I mean, assuming that you eliminate relatives, this is, this is the closest there is to a relative. But also, I wanted Jane for once to save somebody who was irritating to her. <laughs> well, <And> he is. <laughs> yeah, spend an awful lot of time with this person who knows everything and, uh, you know, sort of constantly reminds you of how smart he is. And he yeah. has a handicap, too, which is that he's in fragile health. Right. And I had a little trouble with this man who's, you know, in some danger of corking off, plunging into icy rivers and running about, and I thought... Well, Jane's very inspiring to <laughs> Well, <laughs> I was a little worried that he was going to die out her, you know, and then her problem was going to be how to get rid of the body, but we won't yeah. pursue that since we don't want anyone to read the book and wonder which of these scenarios will, a little will bit play would have been much shorter. If <laughs> <laughs> so, in book four, assuming, am I right, there's still one to come? There's still one to come, and I'm, uh, I have a draft, and I'm going to spend the summer suffering over it and trying to make it uh, a sort of good goodbye to Jane. <laughs> well, I'm putting her to sleep, I'm not killing her. <laughs> well, I certainly hope not. It was way too long between The Butcher Boy and your next, and your next novels. I don't want that to happen again. But what I'm thinking is that if, if he has then uh, said to Jane, well, it's okay, you know, let's, let's go forward with, with your disappearing because we need to help my guy, I presume there's still some reason then that in book five she's going to be able to do this Oh yeah. Again, so. Right, there's one more. 
<laughs> Are you, when you say one more, is that just because of the book contract, or do you really think you've come to the end of the series, which I think I, can happen, you know, that you can say all you've had to say, and that's it. It's all that I have to say at present. That's why I don't want to, to uh, put a complete ending to Jane. That's, um, you I'm mean, is this going to be a Reichenbach Falls number, where she's just going to kind of go over the falls, and then we're all going to wonder if she'll come back? No, actually what I'm hoping is that she'll have a complete normal life and then I'll come back to her when she's ready to play again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that's a wonderful idea. Well, she certainly is a delightful character. I forgot to mention that there are two intervening titles. Uh, we went from The Vanishing Act, which is the first one, and it's the second one. Is that? The second one was Dance for the Dead. Thank you, Dance and for the, the Dead, and, the and then Shadow Woman. Right. Which I think in many ways is the most exciting chase. Isn't that the one where they go across the wilderness? Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Okay. And where Thanks. was uh, Montana? Yeah. Glacier National Park. Because this was the guy that got into trouble in Vegas, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's moving. I thought that that whole outdoors, because a lot of the time she seems to be hanging out in airports and other things, but mm -hmm. I loved all of that dramatic um, well, thank you. wilderness. Okay. It, it really is my favorite book in the series, cause I, I, and I think it's attributable to the setting uh, as much as anything. Mm -hmm. really well, fun. maybe I'll bring her outdoors for the last <laughs> <laughs> you got to send her over the falls in a barrel or something since she comes to that part of the state. Uh, well, Tom, I'm just delighted that, um, that you've come back to sign books for us again because we haven't seen you since, I think it was the first one, Vanishing yeah, Act, yeah. When, when you were able to join us. And I, I hope that you'll have that opportunity um, one more time. <laughs> oh, we'll have that opportunity <laughs> one more time. I certainly thank you for coming and sharing a little time with us today. Well, thank you for having me.